Hello, welcome to InfoHub. In our headlines, President Granger transfers culture, youth, and sport portfolio to Minister Norton. Apprentices graduate from Youth in Natural Resources program. Arnaputa peanut butter could soon be sold internationally. Critical steps being taken to protect small and medium-sized business owners and several hinterland roads will be upgraded. Stay tuned for the details of these and more. Daddy. <laughs> Now for the details. In late breaking news, President David Granger this afternoon announced that he has transferred the portfolio of culture, youth and sport to Minister of Social Cohesion, Dr. George Norton. No new ministry will be created and culture, youth and sport will now be under the ministry of the presidency. Minister Norton will retain the social cohesion portfolio. However, his office will now be at the Department of Culture, Youth and Sport on Main Street. Minister Nicolette Henry had previously held the portfolio. She will now concentrate on her substantive designation of education, to which she was recently elevated. At least 500 jobs are projected as more than 800,000 hectares from the former Barama concession have been awarded to two companies, one local and one foreign. Tiffany Rodis has more. R.L. Sukram and Sun Sawmill and Rong Ang Inc., the companies awarded the concessions, are expected to increase earnings in the forestry sector. The Ghana Forestry Commission signed off on the awards, which are expected to rake in at least U.S. $7 million in export revenue and see the production of lesser-used species increase by at least 25% from its current 15%. A Ministry of Natural Resources release noted that the two companies are expected to invest U.S. $9.5 million by 2020 and create more than 500 new jobs. Rong Ang Inc., an Asian company, was awarded Parcel 1, while R.L. Sukram and Sons was awarded Parcel 2 State Forest Exploratory Permits, both of which are located in the northwest Masruni Pataro district. There is a three-year process before commercial full-scale harvesting begins. The companies were urged by the Ministry of Natural Resources to conduct their operations in a manner that is compliant with the GFC Code of Practice and other laws and regulations, respectful of the environment and beneficial to the people of Guyana. For InfoHub, Tiffany Rogers. Minister of Public Infrastructure David Patterson clears the air about claims made yet again by former Minister Dr. Leslie Ramsamy relating to the MV Torani. Here is Crystal Stull with this report. Minister of Public Infrastructure David Patterson described yet another claim by former Minister of Agriculture Leslie Ramsamy as being, and I quote, far from the truth, end of quote. He noted that under the former government, the historical vessel was at one time up for vending due to long-standing neglect. Patterson said Ramsamy should know that advertisements were placed by his ministry warning mariners to stay clear of the wreck and to navigate with caution. In light of investigations made by Transport and Harbors Department, the minister highlighted that responses to the media were prompt, especially from his public infrastructure minister, Annette Ferguson. With efforts to prevent the ship from slipping into channels, the minister said four piles are being driven around the vessel. Minister Patterson said MV Torani has served Guyana, particularly the Burbis River, for decades. However, he noted that the state of the vessel is but a recount of the past years. He reminded that in 2012, the vessel was moored and left in a poor state. Consequently, according to Patterson, TNHD focused attention on the servicing and rehabilitation of operational ferries such as Lady North Coat and MV Cano One to the tune of millions of dollars. Rehabilitating a long neglected and decommissioned ship would have been more costly to the people of Guyana, Patterson explained. Crystal Stall for InfoHub. President Granger reiterated the need to protect Ghana's borders in an address to the Ghana Defense Force Reservists, who recently completed a two-week-long field tactical exercise entitled Iron Weed. In his address, the president highlighted the importance of Ghana taking the necessary steps to protect its borders. His comments came in light of the recent discovery of a twin-engined Beechcraft aircraft in Region 9. According to the head of state, the government and the defense board have been working with the GDF to ensure that steps are taken to equip service members with the necessary tools they will need. 
He added that the government will soon be re-establishing the Guyana People's Militia countrywide. President Granger also pointed out that he has also asked the Chief of Staff to consider the reintroduction of mounted troops to conduct patrols in the hinterland. Twelve young apprentices graduated from the Youth in Natural Resources three-week program. Tiffany Rodius has more. At the simple graduating ceremony, the graduates described the experience as life-changing. As youths who are joining the world of work and for their studies, we did gain a lot of experience in this three weeks program, and it allowed us to appreciate and experience what the entire natural resources, what they do. The experience unified the apprentices during their tours to various companies in the natural resources sector, Zayona McPherson noted. The long travel trip allowed us to bond even more with each other. We had singing and dancing on the bus. The program also provided an opportunity to explore Guyana as one participant demonstrated through poetry. We traversed regions 1 to 10, unaware of how and when we came to a better understanding of this land we grew up in. Minister Raphael Trotman wished the participants well in their future endeavors and stated his ministry's intention to remain engaged with them. Next year we'd like to to bring you back so that you could be you now the first pioneers of this, the beginning of something that is going, I think, going to be great. The ministry's apprenticeship program is the first of its kind, Minister Trotman explained. He added that it seeks to highlight the ministry's work while encouraging the next generation to fall in love with their country. For InfoHub, Tiffany Rogers. Government takes critical steps to protect small and medium-sized business owners in the agro-processing industry. Crystal Stoll tells us how. This aim is being achieved through a three-day workshop on the management of intellectual property assets. The workshop is a collaborative effort between the Ministry of Legal Affairs and World Intellectual Property Organization. Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs Basil Williams said that the government is keen to develop agro-processing. We need to have agro-processing because of the nature of our agricultural um, industries and the hinterland regions, etc. The president has always been speaking on that, that we should have a lot of our um, products processed and, and stored effectively so that they could be marketed. The Attorney General added that it was important for enterprises to know the benefits of intellectual property rights. And so you wonder how come our sugar is being branded Demra sugar, but then it is produced in Mauritius. And so I believe that it's very, it is very important that we continue to push globally for the development and expansion of international intellectual property and protection of assets not only of countries, but of individuals. SME and WIPO Councillor Anil Saha stressed that business owners need to take intellectual property rights seriously. Intellectual property is essentially a way to protect, to obtain property rights on intellectual creations of the human mind. Okay? We will, of course, during the course of these three days, go into each and every detail of the different types of intellectual property, the patent, the copyright, the industrial design, the trademark, the geographical indication, trade secrets. Sena said that firms will be able to protect their brand and derive a number of financial benefits. He noted that branding will help local businesses be more successful and as such business owners should focus more on it. Arnaputa Peanut Butter Factory, one of the most outstanding community projects in Region 9, is now hoping to expand its reach by tapping into the international market. Sonika Thorne tells us more. The school feeding program in the North Rupununi is the main market for the peanut butter from the Arnaputa Valley factory. Tushal Aidan Jacobus explained that there was a reduced demand for the peanut butter after the Region 9 administration decided not to supply students with peanut butter and cassava biscuits every day. It was affecting the residents within the community because now if the peanut butter factory used to take off a certain amount of peanuts from farmers, that had reduced by a big margin. That had declined. reason being is because they are not um, super, um, supplying peanut butter in a large quantity anymore. In addition to supplying the schools with peanut butter, the village council is in the process of seeking other local markets to assist in relieving the farmers of their produce. 
The facility's chairperson, Sonia Sears, said that the group is also seeking international markets. They are in the process of rebranding. In the terms of expanding, we are looking at the export market, but we are, at the moment we are actually working on, instead of using the plastic jars, which I would show you just now, we are looking at using the bottles, yeah, which means that we'd have to design back the labels, and, but we are working towards that, and I know we are going to get there with the help of the network, because since we are in the network, we've been getting a lot of help, and we've been exposed to a lot of, like, workshops, and, like, management, bookkeeping, computer and so on. The Arnaputa Processors Friendly Society in the North Rupununi was established by a group of women in 2005 when farmers in Arnaputa were struggling to find markets for their peanut produce. Through a Government of Ghana Canada project, the facility was officially commissioned in 2010. Outfitted with modern equipment, the factory has the capacity to produce more than 100 pounds of peanut butter per day. Sinico Thorne for InfoHub. Several key hinterland roads will be surfaced in concrete and asphaltic mixes as the government continues efforts to bridge the gap with coastal communities. Zanil Williams tells us more. Ministry of Public Infrastructure's Senior Hinterland Officer, Jeffrey Walcott, said the move is part of the government's commitment to connecting the coastal and hinterland regions. Walcott said that construction will be done from Port Kaituma Airstrip to Fitzberg Housing Scheme, Mabaruma Airstrip, and Kumaka Wharf Road in concrete. Roads in Letem will be transformed to asphaltic roads by year-end. Maintenance works will be done from Rockstone to Kurpukari and Aichuni to Kwakwani. Once these roads are done, you wouldn't have to require any maintenance for another 25 years, so you can focus on developing more of the community. The Ministry of Public Infrastructure has allocated $2.3 billion this year to develop hinterland roads. Minister within the ministry, Annette Ferguson, pled with citizens to be patient as the government works to bridge the hinterland coastal gap. Everything cannot be done within a year or within the five year period of this government. Your government is working assiduously to ensure we bridge the gap between the coastland and the hinterland. But in order for us to realize this, we all have to work collectively and demonstrate unison and cohesiveness that we can propel Guyana to where we really want to see Guyana develop. In 2018, works will be done on roads such as Matthews Ridge to Baramito, Wanaina to Yarakita, Karasabai to Monkey Mountain, Latem to Aishalton, and Wiz Rock to Rock Stone, among others. Zanil Williams for InfoHub. The Ghana Civil Aviation Authority is investigating the crash of a Cessna 206 aircraft in the Kaicho Gorge, which left Air Services Limited pilot Imran Khan dead. According to reports, following the activation of the emergency location beacon around 9.15 on Sunday morning, an immediate search and rescue operation commenced. The downed aircraft was spotted from the air and a team from the 3-1SF Special Forces Squadron made its way to the crash site. Efforts are currently on the way to retrieve the body and return it to Georgetown for an autopsy. Government has since mandated the GCA to increase the level of safety checks on all aircraft to ensure that similar incidents don't reoccur. Thanks for watching. Connect with us 24-7 on our website and social media. Goodbye now.